You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. In my lifetime, I expect to see three, four, perhaps even more women on the high court bench. Women not shaped from the same mold, but of different complexions. Welcome back to season three mm-hmm. of United States of Women, Ew. New Jersey. New Jersey. This is the American Women History Podcast. Yes. In which we try to bring to you each season a different state and mm-hmm. eight amazing women that you may have never heard about. But you should have. But you should have. You should know them. You know their you know the thing that makes them famous. Yes. Even if you don't know them. Yeah. So that I am Elizabeth and I am joined by the fantastic Jessica. Hello. I gotta find a J one that goes for Jessica. I'll have Jubilee, to work on. Jubilus. Jubiltastic. Jubiltastic. <laughs> I'll work on it. I'll work on it. So, this week's episode, we are discussing Dr. Estrogen. Ooh. (laughs) I have that. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So does everybody? Yes. Everybody. Including all those men out there. You have estrogen in your body. Yeah. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But you got it. (laughs) You got it. So, (laughs) today we are discussing... Dr. Rita S. Finkler. Ooh. Okay. So, Rita Finkler was born November 1st, 1888 Mm -hmm. in Kyrgyzstan province in the Russian Empire, what is modern day Ukraine. Okay. Ooh. Um, originally she was born Rika Shapiro. Okay. But n- no American is going to understand Rika. Well, actually, it get, it's more interesting than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, is, it is, in fact, actually more interesting than that. But she was born uh, one of four. She had two sisters and a brother. Hmm. Her brother died a child, as a, in childhood. Aww. But she attended Bira Besto uh, Gursky College. Mm-hmm. For her undergrad. And then she was accepted to St. Petersburg State University to study law. Wow. Which was really unusual at the time. Yeah. Um, she was admitted to study law when she was 16. Wow. Just. <laughs> what have I done with my life? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so at, at this point, it's the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. She... She's born Jewish. Things are starting to get not okay in Russia. You've got the Bolshevik Revolution on the... Is it ever okay in Russia, to be fair? I mean, valid. (laughs) There are, like... I feel like Russia was okay, like, back when they believed that there were little people... I can't remember what they were called. Dolmovies? And when she arrived, and they discovered she was a woman, and that Rika was not short for Richard... Oh... They revoked the job offer. Oh. So from there, she went, from then on, she went as Rita Finkler. So that she could just. Either you're going to accept it or not. I'm not going to uproot my life for something and then have you go, oh, wait, you're not a Richard? I would have written Richard. (laughs) (laughs) So. um, Instead, in 1919, she moved to Newark, New Jersey. Which is how we end up with her as a famous New Jersey woman, um, where she'd basically be most of the rest of her adult life. Yeah. Um, and she opened a private clinic, private practice, mm. focusing on pediatrics and obstetrics, obstetrics, um, primarily serving the Italian commun- immigrant community in the area. Okay. At the time. Yeah, at the time, that would be Mm -hmm. probably the low-level 
community, I assume. Yes, they were they were the newest immigrants. There we go. Yeah, there we go. that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> so during all this time, um, she was then there for several decades, several several decades. Mm-hmm. She began. Uh, she worked at the Newark Beth Israel Hospital. Mm-hmm. And in 1928, she began research in the field, the newer field of endocrinology at Mount Sinai Hospital. Okay. Okay. In 1928. So endocrinology. Yeah. This is our topic for today. This is, this is something that we've all heard of, but at least I was like, I really know what it I don't is. know a lot of the chronologies <laughs> right <laughs> so endocrinology is the branch of biology and medicine dealing with the endocrine system oh. it's diseases and specific secreti- secretions known as hormones yeah so it's basically all of the organs in your body that secrete hormones because yes. hormones affect Everything in your body. Every single thing in your body. But these sets of organs specifically secrete hormones. Um, So the organs we're talking about, generally speaking, is thyroid. The thyroid. The, sorry, trying to get to my picture. Okay. The penile gland, the pituitary gland, the thyroid and parathyroid glands, the thymus gland, the adrenal glands, the pancreas, and the gonads or ovaries. All right. So basically stacked on top of each other all throughout your body. Yep. Okay. So a little bit of history on the study of endocrinology. And then we'll get to Dr. Estrogen's, Dr. Finkler's impact on the field of endocrinology. Okay. Which was pretty significant. So the earliest study occurred in China. Okay. Okay. Where they were isolating sex and pituitary hormones from urine and using them for medicinal purposes as early as 200 BC. Mm -hmm. It's the earliest record we have of people studying and utilizing hormones. Would this study mainly be for pregnancy and stuff? So, not clear. Oh, okay. Not clear. Um, Because I I feel like one thing I remember learning was Egypt had a pregnancy test in which you peed on wheat. And depending on how it bloomed, depended on, and it was actually kind of legit from what I understood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there, there was some of that, but a lot of the medicinal purposes seem to be steroid use. Okay. All right. That makes sense too. I don't think um, but kind of, you've got, uh, you got all sorts of things that are unclear. Anyway. Mm, eh, history. Eh. <laughs> In Western culture, everything was much more of a humoral approach in understanding biological function, um, which had been favored by the ancient Greeks, the Romans, and then up through Uh Western Europe study, as opposed to hormones. Yeah. In Western culture, your first real kind of foyer into endocrinology occurred in 1849 with Arnold Berthold, who noted that castrated cockerels did not develop combs and wattles, which are their sexual organs, or their... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got, I got it. Um, well, or nor did they exhibit overtly male behavior. So if they'd been castrated, they didn't get the, the pieces that, you know, um, in humans it would be the Adam's, the Adam's apple, apple. I mean, I feel like things. we should have already known this from... Um, oh, God. Con, con, kiss, the do- nope, that's not it. But there was a time when, you know, because church choirs couldn't have women Unix? singing in it. Yes, Unix. But there's a specific term for when it's a choir oh. boy. Like, the, and they would chop off the testes of the choir boy. So his voice would stay high. What is it called? It starts with a C. I will look it up but and just so, shout it in the middle of your tirade. <laughs> that's fine. So, but then the other half of that was that he found that replacement of the testicles back into the abdominal cavity of the same bird or another castrated bird resulted in more morphological development and 
quote unquote normal male behavior. Hey, this thing does something <laughs> if you take it out and put it in. I like that's old science, old body science, old psychology is like, what happens if I take it out? Uh oh, put it back, back in. in. <laughs> See what it did. Um, his conclusion was that the testes must have secreted a substance that conditioned the blood. <laughs> So basically, you know, you know, because remember at the time, most science was based off of like, oh, you've got bad blood in you or your blood's off, which is why you have to like leech yourself. Go ahead. You found it. Castrato. Castrato. I don't know why I could remember that. Sure. Conquistador was what was in my head. <laughs> Castrato. <laughs> so... <laughs> But yeah, so he, so because everything's about the blood, he's like, oh, the testes must like excrete a substance into your blood that changes your blood, which causes male behavior. Yes. <laughs> not, not really the case, but no, we'll go with it. But the blood, we don't understand it. So therefore it has to be the reason for everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, testosterone wouldn't be isolated until 1935. <laughs> just for so like this is this is a while this is a while but the next big one is in uh or at the same time so kind of contemporaneously in 1835 and then reproven in 1840 by other scientists Mm -hmm. graves disease was discovered graves disease an autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid Mm -hmm. particularly creating hypo hyperthyroidism um Hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism is a different one. It's the opposite. Yep. Um, but symptoms include irritability, muscle weakness, sleeping problems, a fast heartbeat, poor tolerance of heat, diarrhea, and unintentional weight loss. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, I, I could use some unintentional weight loss, but probably not a good thing. Not in a healthy <laughs> manner, though. <laughs> So that was discovered in connection with the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting to get, again, those hormones questions. Um, And then you get Addison's disease as discovered in 1849. Okay. In 1902, you get studies of the pancreas and secretion of hormones from there. And basically the fact that they, so two scientists William Bayless and Ernest Starling Mm -hmm. basically discovered like even if we cut off the pancreas to everything else it's still impacting the health like you you have to actually remove the whole organ Mm -hmm. so it there's a secretion concept again in any case endocrinology doesn't really become an actual dedicated field until the mid-1920s Okay. Okay. So this is where, and it's been almost exclusive. Nothing has dealt with female hormones. It's all been testosterone. Well, or, that's how everything in the science community starts. Is is always the white male that we're focusing yes. on, and it always sets back female health for years. I mean, yeah, heart disease is a huge example of that. So in 1928, Finkler jumps into the new field of endocrinology and starts researching and studying. Mm. She studies uh, at Mount Sinai Hospital, and then additionally she does a term at the University of Vienna in 1929, Okay, where she assists uh, in the research on the trials for the first pregnancy test, the Western pregnancy test, the actual, Ooh. what we think of now as a pregnancy okay, test. Okay, cool. Uh, she would then... Return to uh, Beth Israel Hospital. Mm -hmm. And in 1934, after publishing 70 articles on endocrinology, she founded the hospital's uh, endocrinology department Hmm. and served as its director from 1939 to 1951. She was the first female chief of any department at that hospital. They had never had a female chief in any department. Cool. So her research, and this is where we really get into it, she focused on how hormonal disturbances caused infertility, Mm -hmm. amnuria, 
A-M-E-N-O-R-R-H-E-A. Ovarian dysfunction. Mm -hmm. The treatment of menopause. She significantly wrote and researched on that. And a lot of her research was the basis for the way we still treat menopause today. Wow. Yeah. So basically her entire line of research is how endocrinology hormones in particular estrogen progesterone all of those things impact women's Women. health yeah and pregnancy and fertility issues and mm-hmm. birth defects and all of those yep. things and issues she would become very active in the American Medi- American Medical Women's Association mm-hmm. including founding the New Jersey branch Ooh. Of that, um, which they renamed after her in 1956. Ooh, cool. She had a stroke in 1958, but fully recovered, and then she died of coronary occlusion in 1968. Hmm. Some interesting pieces that don't necessarily fit in her timeline, but I thought were really cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she was a non practicing Jew, mm-hmm. but she felt very connected to her Jewish identity and her Jewish heritage. Okay. Um, including chairing the American American Women's American Medical Women's Association Refugee Committee from nineteen thirty eight to nineteen forty eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Additionally, because she was such an active researcher, um fluently. And she used that to basically connect and interact with women doctors around the globe and basically build a network. That's pretty cool. Right? Um, She also was so respected in her field, she actually served as a delegate to the International Congress on Fertility in the 1950s. So, Dr. Estrogen um, and the study of endocrinology, which is... The thought that that wasn't really a thing till the 1920s. Like, it makes sense, but it's also like... Well, think of neurology. I think that one's even newer. Yeah. Or at least knowing how the brain works is definitely (laughs) Is definitely newer. Well, like, or the fact that, like, we just sequenced the entire genome, like, our entire set of genes for the first time in, like, 2008. Yep. The thought that this stuff is all... Like, I always forget how new medical science really is. That's all because techni- technology is catching up. The reason why neurology was so behind was because we didn't have MRI machines. So we couldn't look at it at, without at cutting killing. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Which we don't really, you know... No. Not a good that's idea. That's why we were like, clearly lobotomies work. <laughs> because if you do it, that person isn't crazy anymore. Quote, unquote, crazy. But they're quote unquote not crazy because you chopped out a part of their brain, like, <laughs> and now they can't function. And now, now they're not communicating, and definitely also because a every brain is formed differently. But like, also, just that's not you're not like you're just shoving a thing up their nose, <laughs> like scrambling the brain around, scramble and pulling just it out. pulling it out. Like, there's no <laughs> science. Of course it works. You know what else would work? Like hitting them in the back of the head really hard with a mallet. (laughs) Killing them also works. (laughs) So citations for today's episode. Um, Obviously, uh, the Wikipedia articles, as always, are a good place to start. Um, I did look at an excerpt of a book in Google's books, um, past and promise lives of New Jersey women, which I probably just should have bought for this entire season, but cause I used it on a couple other things, but mm. thankfully Google books is willing to share most of the information. Mm. Uh, in Cycl- the Jewish women's archive, uh, encyclopedia has a really awesome article on Dr. Finkler as well as, um, the Rutgers University Library on Health Sciences, which is where most of her actual articles are held. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of her research is at Rutgers, along with another one of our women later in this season Mm -hmm. who has a whole bunch of writings. Um, And then finally, uh, the New Jersey Women's History uh, 
is new, yeah, the New Jersey women, New Jersey women history dot org, uh, which is where I first picked most of the women for this season because mm. it's one of those really cool archives that has all the things. Yeah, for endocrinology, uh, did a lot with um, the Wikipedia that Wikipedia article, which is super detailed. Um, as well as uh, there's a behavioral endocrinology article from Rutgers as well. Ooh. So that is Dr. Rita S. Finkler, yes. Dr. Endocrinology. Oh, the other interesting part about her, mm. not a feminist. She was convinced that women were born free from the womb. So she didn't buy into anything that society restricting women no do whatever you want is that how she was yeah no, women like, are free they just are choosing to follow these societal standards <laughs> exactly yeah, that's okay. kind of the approach she so like i kind of like that approach to feminism i already am free <laughs> you people are just trying to lock me up <laughs> so um but she ended up i and historians seem to associate that the reason that she could still be so so successful and not and feel that way was because she kept going after new areas of study. Mm-hmm. So, like, she didn't... She didn't go into the already established man's field. Correct. Basically. She just kind of jumped She's into... She's like, ooh, this is new. Yeah. Exactly. Let's do that. That makes sense. So, that is Dr. Rita S. Finkler. <laughs> Jessica, if people want to reach out to you on the latest and greatest in psychology research, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter as JM Bailey writes. And you can find me with the rest of Geek Elite Media at Geek Elite Media and our Facebook page forward slash Geek Elite Media. Archived episodes of this podcast and other podcasts can be found on our website, geekelitemedia.com. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to us on whatever podcatcher you use. Mm -hmm. But until next time. This is United, the Women of United States of Women on the Geek Elite Media Network saying always remember to geek, geek out. out. This concludes our broadcast. Beep.